So welcome everyone to Obelisk Support's latest Move the Needle webinar. This series is designed to support you in your freelance legal role by anticipating some of the challenges you might face and to help you overcome them. I'm Lucinda Ackland, Obelisk Support's learning and development partner. And today we're going to look at setting goals. It's a typical time of year to consider new year resolutions, but despite our good intentions and often a variety of reasons outside our control, many of us are not able to make the sustainable changes we want. But certainly the desire to improve areas of our lives and tackle habits and behaviours that don't serve us remains. And this can be particularly pertinent for freelance legal consultants who have decided to take the leap away from traditional office-based full-time roles into a more flexible way of working. And this can create the impetus and opportunity to look at other areas of our lives in different ways. Now, today we are very fortunate to be joined by an expert in this topic, Kerry Davis Munro, founder of Eat, Nourish, Flourish, coach and an expert with over 25 years experience in organisational wellbeing. Now, housekeeping wise, feel free to put any questions or comments in the Q&A area as we go along and I'll keep an eye on those during the webinar. So welcome Kerry, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little about your background and why now is a particularly great time to be setting goals? Welcome, well thank you for having me first of all Lucinda, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and it's a pleasure to be able to speak to um, your audience who, you know, as you said, it can be a difficult and sometimes a lonely space when you take a, a step away from the traditional office job and the, the roles that we think of traditionally. So um, we often need a little bit more support about that. So my background, um, I am a fully qualified HR professional. And within that, my area of speciality is learning and development within organisations. Um, and my particular interest around that is how well people function. Uh, our ability to turn up to work um, is one thing, but our ability to turn up to work motivated, ready to give our best and, um, and really feeling good about ourselves and the company we work for or, or doing the work that we do is a whole other area. So I'm quite interested in presenteeism at work, turning up but really not being productive at all and really managing um, our motivation, which is, which is key for me. And I've been doing that within organizations and one-to-one -one with people for many, many years. Um, it started with myself and, and turning my life around. Um, and then also my coaching. So I talk, I'm a speaker on the subject of um, many aspects of well-being and self-improvement, motivation, habit change and high performance. Excellent. And I think you were mentioning to me earlier in the week that this week actually falls at a notorious time of the year, Blue Monday, when our New Year's resolutions, if you've actually made them, start to falter and we feel demoralised. Um, can you outline the process to help us create an optimal mindset and tell us more about what you've observed in your practice as a coach to create this right environment for success? You're absolutely right. Um, you know, at this point of the year, the, the 20th of January, Almost everybody, um, without exception, who set a New Year's resolution has probably fallen off the wagon in terms of making that work. We know that less than 7% of people are able to take their resolutions through to February. Now, there's all sorts of reasons behind that, um, but it's more about understanding and setting yourself up for success. And really what we should say is, if we think something in our life needs some change and needs development, then we really should think about doing it right now. We don't need to wait to a new year and that's a big reason why people fail um, but in terms of setting goals it's about what what does it give us now you just mentioned um you know the, the blue monday that we've just got past and we cannot i mean i don't think i'm doing any webinars talks um master classes at the moment without looking a little bit about our you know our context um if the last two years and where people are at particularly people doing the sorts of roles that we've got here on the webinar today and I am, you know, with my um, my colleagues and other coaches, we are seeing something of what we're calling a trauma brain. We're now calling it post-pandemic stress disorder, although we're sort of in the middle of it at the moment. 
So with it, within COVID and the uncertainty that we've had, we've had, um, you know, we've had so much control taken away from us. So one thing I will say about setting proper goals and setting yourself up for success is that first of all, what does it give us? It gives us control. Most people um, don't plan their lives at all. They plan their holidays far more than they plan what they really want in their lives. So it's no wonder then that we actually don't get what we want. We feel demotivated and life feels out of control so in terms of our direction and our purpose proper and I don't necessarily even call it goal setting but proper outcome setting understanding what we want from doing this and going through this process in the first place is really really important um, and in terms of what we're seeing with clients this you know, trauma brain that we're calling it, in terms of the anxiety, in terms of depression that we're seeing with people, even the most robust people, if you Google the 17 effects of um, trauma and PTSD, you will find that everybody is experiencing probably two of them, even, even the most robust. So it's a little bit more, Lucinda, about taking control and taking control of our life. And I just want to show you um, and share a slide at this point. Um, this is something called the circles of control that I talk about all the time. And there's three circles. And what's happened over the last two years is that we have become far more um, aware of what's going on in the wider world. And this is our circle of concern. Now, in terms of what we can do about it, it's practically nothing. You know, the news this week, in terms of what effect we can exert on the fact that Boris Johnson had goodness knows how many parties, we can do nothing. In terms of whether Victoria Beckham's going to launch another range of makeup, we can do nothing. Yet we spend so much of our time watching the news, um, engaging in things in our life that, that we are powerless to change. Now, this is where we should be concentrating here. This is our circle of control. Now, within our circle of control, which I'm going to focus on today and our, our sort of outcomes, this is everything over which we have 100% control. So this is what we do, what we say, what we eat, how we react to things, whether we move our body, whether we decide to take a drug, we have 100% control. And the wonderful thing about this, you know, I'm just going to show you here, the wonderful thing about this, our actions, our behaviours, our attitude and our mindset, this is the stuff that determines our direction in life, whether we're going to stay where we are or whether we're going to move. Now, in this second one here, which is our circle of influence, this is important because it is people around us who, who will have an impact on our behaviour, not, not this out here. This doesn't have an impact at all if, if we don't let it, if we don't turn on mainstream media, if we don't listen to the news, if we don't allow ourselves to watch sort of every government brief, briefing, it doesn't have to have an effect. Now, this will, but importantly here, we can either exert an influence upon other people and we can move outwards in this circle or they can exert an influence on us. Now, so we can either be proactive and have a very proactive focus, yeah, and make sure we're doing the exerting here, or we become really entrenched and we go in and our circle of influence becomes tinier and tinier and tinier. So when people say to me, well, why should I be setting goals then? I will say to you, because it will grow exponentially your circle of influence. And that's what's really, really important in doing this. So when we then look at everything else that's going on outside, what that means is it doesn't matter what anyone else does because we are on our own sweet journey. And it's about setting up your, um, your mindset and your actions. I always say to people, before you start anything, set yourself up for success. Um, and part of that is, as you asked in your question, really creating an optimal mindset. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that, um, first of all. Now, we talk about mindset a lot. You know, we talk about a positive mindset and negative mindset. We also talk about mindset within businesses. And we talk about something called a growth mindset. Now, in setting goals, we're looking at growth, we're looking at moving, we're looking at developing our lives, and I'm going to talk about all the aspects of our lives, um, in whatever direction we want it to go. But if we do that as a New Year's resolution, and, and let's look at some of these, uh, typically someone will say, I want to lose weight, 
well, firstly, I will tell you that our mind doesn't even connect to the word loss. So that's a that's a that's a non-starter before we've even you know begun day one. We have to turn everything into a positively framed outcome or a goal in order for our brain to even recognize it. Or people will say to me, I'm going to run a marathon this year or um, I am going to go vegan. Now, these are huge things. Yeah, they're really huge things. And sometimes people will also say, well, actually, I'm going to do something and I'm going to plan it for five years. Five years is too many. Again, we can't connect to that. We've got lots of growth and we've got lots of change um, along the way. But we have got to understand, first of all, in this process, who we are, because when I work with clients, whether this is on um, habit change, alcohol, food, career, relationships, if we don't start out in understanding who we are and the reality of where we are today at that starting point, at the, at the start line almost, the gun's about to go off, then we stand very little chance of moving and hitting the finish line. So first of all, we have to dig deep and understand who we are. And people often say to me, well, you know, what, what do you mean by that? And I, and I always answer with, well, actually, we are, if I was to cut you open, you know, what sort of things would be written through you like a stick of rock? What has been there for 10, 20 years? Sometimes your values change, but really define who you are. So I advise clients either with a coach, with somebody else or, you know, or online. There's all sorts of ways to do this. Dig deep in understanding your values and who you are. Yeah. Now, why is it so important to understand our values? Because otherwise we can find ourselves butting against things, literally having our values bashed around the head, doing a job where our values are ignored day to day. And this causes stress. Most of our stresses and anxieties arise when something that we hold dear to us or a value like honesty, integrity, but when our values are bashed around the head, we feel this incongruous feeling. We feel stress, we feel anxiety, but we can't start to get that anxiety out and get aligned until we know what those values are. So do some deep work to know and understand your top six values because once you've got them, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about a personal philosophy later, they link to this thing which I call a blueprint for life, and it gives you a real guiding principle and a, and a sort of route for life, and it helps all your following decisions, and most importantly, when we're talking about outcomes, um, it helps your commitment to keep going. Does that make sense, Lucinda? It certainly does, and there's a lot of quite profound things that you're you're mentioning because it sounds like there's a really deep psychological understanding that you need to have of self-awareness to really understand what you, what kind of person you are what your values are and to align them to your desired outcomes and to recognize what are your spheres of influence and what you can change can you tell us more about looking at your at you know the values that profile and, and how this manifests itself in this wheel of life that you've, you've talked about? The reason I dig deep is because unless we form a psychological connection to the outcomes of the work that we're going to do, then again, there is little chance that we're going to carry on with them. So for example, I will ask people, what's this going to give you? You know, where's this going to take you? What will be the effect of this? What will you say to yourself when you get there? What will you be wearing? Because the science shows, and, and this is quantum physics, that when we actually put ourselves there, we're, we, we've, we're halfway there to making it happen. Um, and very interesting, if people are interested in the quantum physics, do look up someone called Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, and he talks a lot about breaking the habit of yourself to get to where you want to be and putting the energy out there that you are already there. So this is a sort of reframing, you know, miles away from I want to run a marathon. I want to do this. I want to do that. What's it going to give you? Who else will it affect? Who else will it have um, an impact on? So we will create a very, very solid framework 
and a visual picture. You know, we think, we, we dream in pictures. So what I tend to do with clients is get them to build an absolutely vivid visual picture of what that feels like, what that smells like, what that looks like. And then one of the biggest things I ask people is what's your why then? Out of everything, you know, we've talked about all the wins that this is going to give you and the outcomes that you're going to get, what's your why? And I always say to clients, ensure your why is huge. Now, that's huge for me, because if it's not huge, yeah, and if it doesn't have a massive impact upon what you really, really want in your life, then you will dodge it. You will dodge the hard work. You will dodge the commitment and what it takes to really get where you want. And, and I always say, you know, focus on what you really, really, really want. Focus on your outcomes. Focus on creating your life, really, and what you want uh, life to look like. So can you see that? Yeah. So this is called the wheel of life. Now, I would say, first of all, you can you can download these anywhere. Just Google the Wheel of Life and you'll get so many different pro formers. I quite like this one. This is the one I use in my book. It's quite simple. And I say to people, try and divide your life, you know, into six or seven areas. Now, I have to say some clients only have four. I dealt with one recently. He, he only had four. And that was interesting. But usually our life falls into these sorts of areas. People always say to me, OK, so I've got my partner. I've then got my my family and sometimes that could be just a you know your very um, immediate family like it could be your, your you know your siblings or your um your children but then we've got wider family then we've got career sometimes people like to even have a whole section for retirement sometimes things like fun and retirement um health money personal growth and physical environment more and more, and this is really interesting, and the reason it's interesting is because it has a positive benefit on our mental well-being, people are putting charity into this. Um, unprompted, I, I, I say to people, this needs to, you know, this needs to break up and comprise all the bits of your life. Um, and people are putting charity into it. Now, the interesting thing about that is when we do things for other people, we feel really good about ourselves. Um, a good deed a day reflects on us. It literally changes the colors, colors of our brain. So the first thing I say to people is break down your life into these areas. And then once you've done that, and this is the next image, give it a score. So we would, you know, we're maybe not going to get a 10 out of 10. Maybe that's unrealistic, but we would really like our lives to be as fulfilled as they possibly can in these areas. But take a look at some of these, you know, on this one in particular, physical environment is at a is at a number four here. So we've got little markers along the edge here and this is the way to do it. And then we fill out these areas. Family and friends is doing really well on this profile. Partner and romance. It, it needs to be better. There's some factors missing here. And then fun and recreation again is good. And health is, a, is at a 10. So. I would advise people, this is the first thing, unless you know where you are in all of the important areas of your life, then you can't possibly begin to decide which area needs work in which area you need to break down into the goals. So this is the, the first piece of the puzzle. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can share um, a different document with you um, that might even break that down so so so, for example, once you've decided that, you know, actually, no, I don't feel particularly fulfilled in this area or, you know, I, I need to break this down further. Career, for example, might break down to success, achievement, you know, new job, growth, accomplishment, courses I want to do this year. Personal might break down into self-esteem. It might it might, you know clash with and some of these ven very very nicely relationships um often it, it vends with personal relationships partner physical might be you know we've got to look at mental well-being as well within that you know when we look at health health is a number of different things vitality exercise diet you know if someone was looking to go plant-based then we would look at certainly diet what does this look like now how do i break that down financial might look at security oh my goodness me if this has come up as one of your values then this probably links heavily to financial being self-sufficient being independent 
Um, again, this comes up with lots and lots of values. And within social, um, sometimes this might be something like enjoyment, recreation, play and I'm going to talk about creativity and then most most importantly you know something that we're seeing as coaches we've got to think about love connection and communication so that probably comes under family and that probably comes under friends as well so all of those things are vital for us to get an idea of where are we at if we don't know where we're at then we don't know how to start. And this is why when you just throw out a resolution, of course it fails, because we haven't taken stock of, for example, what's going on right now, but also what have I tried before? Why is this a New Year's resolution year after year after year? What am I missing here? And what are the other pieces of the puzzle that might be stopping me from actually achieving this? A couple of things that come out at me is these spheres you know you've got the your circle of concern and and concentrating on what you can control and how you can make that a positive thing to get better influence and also the wheel of life being a sphere which is is broken down into the various aspects that are really important to you and then so you can see why more detailed work has to be done to bring it to life to identify your um, uh, goals and you talked about having the scaffolding of good habits but you need to by the sounds of it have a scaffolding of approach of the building blocks to then move move forward and I can I can really see that you know that strong alignment with the goal which basically every time you think well why aren't I doing the habit you have to think well what's blocking me which I know you <laughs> we're going to come on on to that um, so yes I suppose that that's what I was going to Mm. next about creating the alignment and how best you can achieve that people know that this is a process it's like anything in life lucinda you know and and, and the way that we approach things probably as parents or as mums or you know we children just want something immediately don't they and we actually have to say, well, hold on a minute. What's it going to take to get that? What do I need to go through? I've got a son doing GCSEs. He's quite capable, but um, he had his school report yesterday. He's not where he should be. So we had a conversation. What do we need to do? How do we plan this out? How, much, how long have we got? And how do we attach to that? And what's it going to give you at the end of it? Because in our, in our education system, even... We, we aren't given the tools to do this kind of thing. We're just told to do stuff. And actually... That doesn't, that doesn't give us the connection with where we're going. It doesn't even connect with who we are. So we do have to create that alignment with what we want to achieve and also our identity because part of this process, and it is deep work, is about self-actualization. Who am I? What do I want? What are my needs right now? And some of us, we can go through our whole lives without asking those questions. And certainly sometimes as mums, as parents, we can put these questions to a, you know to one side until they really bubble to the surface and that can start to have a, a quite detrimental effect on life so one of the things that um that is really important also is that the outcomes or the things that you might say that you want to do are aligned first of all with your values but also with where you are in life so for example if you said well, actually, I want to do an Ironman challenge this year. I'm going to need so many hours of training. I'm going to be out every Saturday. Um, I'm going to need to spend quite a lot of money on all my equipment, you know, blah, blah, blah. But actually, another one of your areas of pie of your life was, you know, my children, I'm a mom, I'm doing this, this, this. Would it even be realistic to think that you could do that? You know, the, the, the conflict that's going to give you at this point in your life, trying to divide your time and do something which is, you know, could be a, a, a wholly take up all your time at the same time as managing a family, at the same time as managing a job. We have to be realistic with what we're doing and we have to create alignment with who we are, where we're at in life and everything else. And another way of doing that, um, a little exercise, is once you've done your wheel, an exercise that I often give clients is called a be, do, have. And you can, you know, I tell them to absolutely dump everything onto paper. Within those areas of our, of our pie, almost like your trivial pursuit pie of life, write down everything you want to be, do, and have. And then ask yourself, 
does it align with those areas of my life? And I'm going to give you an example here that, that um, when I trained to be a coach, um, someone said in training, he said, all of his all of his life he'd wanted he'd, I think he'd wanted a, a Porsche or something or a certain type of really flashy car and he said I you know I you know so in my be do have I wrote down I, I want this car but when he went back to his wheel he was training to be a, you know another um, coach um, uh, uh, qualification he had a young family you know he was absolutely rammed with life really and he just thought Actually, that doesn't fit in at all. Let's let's take that out for now. And yeah. that's what I mean. It has to fit, Lucinda, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's I've got an interesting question here. Thank you, Jessica. And she's asked, when we're giving our areas of our life a score out of 10, what criteria are we using? Or is it a gut feel? And that's really particularly for our community of lawyers who are being asked to be so precise and... Um, you know what are the metrics it's, it's it's going to be i'm interested to know what you think <laughs> so that would be two things i'd say um first of all it is a gut feel it's instinctive we mm. tend to know what's not going right in our life but that would be that second second visual image that i gave you where you're breaking it down now i would say break those down into what what uh, what do you think that small pie comprises for you yeah. So I, I don't know if you're looking at, you know, for example, work are, you know, are you getting the team support that you need? Are you getting the growth that you need? So break it down into all those things that you want and need. And within that, that will give you clarity on where that is out of a 10. Yeah, because yeah. each of those little things will have a score. Other people know immediately they will look at relationship and say, actually, my relationships are probably at a three. Um, you know, what I'm doing for charity at the moment, it's at a one, but I need it to be at an eight, you know, because this is going to give me my well-being. Health, break health down. Often, you know, I, I, I talk about the triangle of health a lot, as, as you well know, where, um, you know, the triangle of health, I believe our whole well-being relies on three things, our ability to optimally nourish ourselves, our ability to move yeah, I'm not even going to use the word exercise, but to move every day, every bodily system relies upon that and to get optimum sleep. So within health and well-being, I would look at those three things. Yeah, that that those are the those are the key points. Where's my sleep? You know, I can tell you last night my problem, my sleep was probably at a six. That's not good enough. So each day I assess that and think, right, what didn't I do? What can I do better? There's always somewhere else to go with sleep, always another way of, of bolstering it. So your, your ways of doing that will be very different from somebody else's because what's important to you within that slice of life is going to be different to somebody else's. So somebody else might immediately instinctively say, yeah, it's at a two. And somebody else might want to say, right, I want to break that down so I know exactly what that looks like and what I need to, to work on. Make it very, very specific. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um... Jessica, do put uh, any more questions in the q and if, if, if you want further clarity. Um, and on that point of clarity, I think it's really interesting because we can just travel through life without really putting names to what we're feeling and putting names to our goals and, and really sitting down and taking time. So which is why, I suppose it goes back to your point of, you know, it, it being nebulous and why we come back every year with our repeated resolutions because we're not satisfying them or meeting them mm. but we're not really making the progress in identifying them and really understanding what's going on under mm. our bonnet as it as it were and I know um this leads to your um thinking about making the personal philosophy um uh, and how this is sort of key to making these fundamental um changes for life yes yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have to know who we are. And, and really, we have to understand our needs and our wants in order to know what we what we want next. It's absolutely vital. One thing I will just caveat that with people also have to be ready, Lucinda, to do that. And sometimes this is why I work a lot with habit change and, and high performance um, and development. And I can tell immediately whether someone has actually had enough yeah, of where they are. 
Are you ready to move? What's the point beyond which you, you can't go on doing this? And then others, you know, I work in one group where some people are there three years and actually they're coming back on the, you know, you know, when you're a child, there's a roundabout and you get ready to jump off, you get ready to jump off and you stay on. Um, and I would say, you know, that Mel Robbins thing, she just says, go five, four, three, two, one, do it. You've got to be ready to do that. And you have got to understand if you stay where you are, what's serving you to do that? I work closely with a psychologist um, and, uh, and I often say to say to him, what was going on here? And he says, if you ask somebody in, at the forefront of their mind, what's stopping you, they wouldn't have a clue. But something deeply psychological is saying something serving me to stay here, to say everything. Sometimes everything's bad and What's it giving you? So those are those are two things just to just to be aware of there. Um, and within those goals, again, in connecting to it, very make it very specific and then embody it. So instead of saying, I would like to, I always cut out the would like to. Woods and shoulds in life don't, you know, they don't get us where we want to be. So I want you to embody it already. So it might be. I'm a mar marathon runner and then we put a date on it. We have to put a date on it or it becomes a nice to have. Um, I will. I, I am someone who eats no refined sugars. Yeah. Instead of just saying, oh, it's January the 1st, I'm going to eat better. Well, oh, what the hell does that mean? We, you know, we need to delve into that very, very specifically and build ourselves a timeline around that. Um, and, and it's vital that we do. Yeah. So we've got our outcomes. What does it give me? We've got our why. We know the parts of our life that it affects. Um, we've got our values, which is going to drive it. That's our petrol in the engine. But then we've got to break that down further into, OK, What's my timeline and what do I need to do? If it was, it, what's the first point here? You know, what's my first step? If I knew that first step, what would it be? And I always say the outcomes are like the World Cup, the Olympics, yeah? We are then going to track back and each week you then play a match. You do a bit of training to get to where you want to be. And, you know, most of us aren't Olympic athletes. Um, so, so we don't have to, you know, we're not thinking quite in that way. But actually the thought process is, are exactly the same. We yeah. track back and we, we make sure that every day we're doing something to get there. So within that, Lucinda, I'm now going to come to your bit about personal philosophy and the driving motivation. Again, there's ways to do this online, um, but I would probably see if you can work through it with, with somebody, a specialist. It takes out the um, subjectivity. And the reason I say this is because this is part of the values work. And when I work with people, first of all, they will also, or, because the ego attaches, um, attaches different value to different things. So we say, well, you know, what do you think your top five values are? And people, oh, 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 honest, honesty, honesty, um, uh, integrity. Um, and, and of course, they're things that we all want to be. And, and when, when we don't get it back, my goodness me, we, we feel that. But a far better way of doing that is to go about it in an exercise that I do with clients to look at different times in their life. And all I get them to do is talk to me about different experiences. And out of that, um, and that's part of my training, I then can can start to see what's important to people. I can see where people's values have been taken a, a bashing. Um, and it's a far, far more real and realistic way of doing things. So that's the first process. And then I develop that into something which, uh, you know, all of the top coaches, all of, you know, if you go into, you look at some of the, the top entrepreneurs now in, in um, IT and um, uh, coaching, development, motivation, People rely on something called their personal philosophy. And your personal philosophy is sort of a blueprint for life. It's like what underlies everything that I do. So it's about taking those five values and putting it, translating it into two or three sentences that sort of sum you up and are, you know, supported by those five values. So, for example, um, I can give you my personal p philosophy is to always um, stand in and stand under my truth. And the way that a personal philosophy works is that 
while things are going to go wrong, and I'm going to tell you that all these journeys, they're not linear. We don't set ourselves an outcome and we go for it. And it's just easy, plain sailing along the way. It's not. Life's going to happen to you. We set ourselves up with that castle, which is strong, um, or that scaffolding, which I, uh, you know, I use that word a lot, which is strong. And the cannonballs are going to come. Yeah, the bad days are going to come. It's about how we deal with it. So for example, the email comes in that really rattles you, that kicks your values about and you think what am I going to do about it so you give yourself the time and the space first of all to to think about how you're going to answer it and then the thing about your personal philosophy is well this is me this is how I react to situations Um, another client I will tell you hers is um, to to be my absolute best self and to give my best self to others um, each day so the email comes in you put your response down And then you run it by your personal philosophy. And then if you run it by your personal philosophy and you say, right, if I look at this in a week and I run it by my personal philosophy again, would I get the same answer? And then you send it. It's about not looking back on situations and saying, God, I wish I'd done that differently. It's about looking back and saying, would I have done that differently? Is that me? And if it's you, and it's the way that you live life, and it's according to your values, then it might well cause friction. It might well cause misalignment with people. But my goodness me, in your head, you're perfectly aligned, and it keeps your boat steady. You know, when we feel unsteady, it's because we're pulled, and we're rocked, and we're working according to other people's values. When we work according to our own and our personal philosophy, you know, it's your blueprint for life. It's your wheel for life. It's so much easier to make decisions and feel happy with them and uncompromised. And that's why I say to people, really identify that. And it's a it's a guidance. Yeah, it makes it just peels away all those other layers. So that's why it's important. Yeah, I think it's so interesting. Also, we've got there's so many uh, descriptive words which create a, this metaphor of construction, you know, the scaffolding, the blueprint. And I know you've got um, also been talking about toolkits, um, about things you can do to to protect yourself, because, of course, you know, the life comes at you and think people don't do, have a bad day. Um, and typically people will um, create a habit they'll break that habit and then it all it all gets lost and I think one of the things that is I think is interesting is that we it's not as if we're not doing embodying our actions but if we have the self-awareness and a structure then at least we've got a framework we go okay why did that happen why didn't I stick to it it's okay because this is my scaffolding it is it is putting in the work to have this self-awareness and understanding your values and the outcomes um, and I think um, one of the other things that you are, have got very much for people to be able to do is to to use a journal to document their um, experiences you know tracking mm. progress and that will help um, I'm guessing identify well what went wrong there and what do I need to tweak or you know let's look at that again and uh, particularly aligned to that element that you discussed if something your gut instinct is to perhaps react that way but have this permanent check does this align with my values it helps you yeah no you're absolutely right Lucinda so the first um the first point of any habit change are your thoughts um you know thoughts do I want to do this what might I like to do what's going on for me um and we can become really sabotaged by our thoughts um and I always have this expression we are not our thoughts we are that which is experiencing them so we need to take control of our thoughts and the way that we can take control of our thoughts is by really calling them out but also by getting them out of our head so as you say I am absolutely um, an advocate for journaling and uh, you know all my years of coaching and supporting people when I ask people what's been the biggest support for you journaling comes up one of the top things time and time and time again because it enables us to step back and give us space between our thoughts so you know so does meditation but there's a number of ways of getting them out of our head that can be on paper 
that can be talking them through with somebody else, talking them through with a coach who will raise your awareness, who will raise your um, your perspective, change your perspective. That's my job. That's fundamentally my job. My fun, my job more I see for people. Obviously, what their outcomes are really important, and 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 luckily, I'm I, you know I have great shifts in clients. But more than that, the journey for me and people understanding their thoughts and who they are, and the, the awareness and the perspective within that process, that's the beauty. And that's why journaling, writing down your thoughts each day. And, and I don't, you know, some people say to me, oh, I'm not good at that. And I say, well, you talk it into a microphone. There's, there's other ways of doing it. Or an, another lady I work with, she's, she's a visual learner. She draws each day. This is how I'm feeling. And then talks it through with me. Um, it, it, it's just it's powerful. So there are other ways to get your thoughts out of your head to notice them. And a very simple way of doing that each day is to say, what's going on for me? Not an essay, a couple of lines. How's it making me feel? What are my needs around this? Yeah, be aware of your needs. No one else will support your needs but you and you need to ask people. And then thirdly, what action am I going to take? Because without action, we're nothing. Our attitude in all of this plus our action are what equals our results. So that's vital in this in this point. Our habits, you know, are, will be difficult to, to change unless we really understand what's going on. And on those bad days, we also the power of journaling is if we're documenting what's happening, we go back and we think, well, what did I do that day? Oh, yeah, I, I went for a run or I went for a walk or I literally had three glasses of water. I put on a piece of music or I watched a comedy and I felt better because there are always ways to um, to make yourself feel better, to upgrade from where you are. Um, does that help, Lucinda, on that point? Yes, absolutely. And I'm just thinking about our freelance legal consultants who may well be working at home or managing a blend of, of remote or uh, office work and, and particularly with new assignments. Do you have any specific pointers to help them improve tangible things that could help their well-being? I, obviously, you've covered an awful lot in terms of the, the background. Yes. Um, so I, I, mean, I have to come back to my triangle of health in terms of take everything back to basics. Yeah. Come back to your basic, I call it my tent pegs, get your tent pegs in. Am I eating optimally? Can, can I improve that? Because this is going to support any other goals, any other outcomes you want. You know, get some movement in every day. This time of year, get your sunshine in. We're lucky. I live in southwest London. The sun is streaming through today. Get your, get your sunshine in. Yeah. And get outside. Be in nature. Absolutely. And, and certainly work to get your sleep um, schedule there. Um, and then, you know, each day, our motivation builds um, and habits build and stack. So make sure that you, you build yourself a framework of the things that work for you, stack them. So for, what do I mean by that? So for example, get up in the morning and have a glass of water by your bed that you can drink. And that's the first great habit of the day. Get your phone out the bedroom so it's not the first thing of the day. Go downstairs, have your smoothie prepared from the night before. Already you've got four or five stacked habits which are going to support you and we know this really really helps in terms of habit change and track your daily progress look at three things that went well each day um, I set up for the day by thinking what do I want to go well today I, I vis visualize that and then at the end of the day what am I grateful for what did go well you know what happened so um, freelance people as well one of the biggest points in in change um, you know, uh, if you, you might be working alone. So I would say, make sure that you get support on the journey, make sure that you get help from people along the way. Um, and that you don't become isolated. We know over the last few years, most of our most of the chemicals that make us feel good, oxytocin, serotonin, etc. They are built from having hugs from people, having interactions. So ensure that when you decide to make changes, you've got somebody to support you. You've got a support group. Doesn't have to be a coach, um, but um, make sure it's somebody who's going to be objective with with that. 
make sure that you get the bad things out. I always say to people, make sure, first of all, that your kitchen, your home is a haven. So things that are going to sabotage you, like alcohol, um, like cigarettes, um, like sugars, get, get those things out. And, and mind that if you're working predominantly on a screen, that your relaxation time just doesn't merge. You don't finish work and then start to shop or um, go on to social media because this is so bad for us. Not only does it impact upon our sleep, but it impacts upon our, our general well-being. We then begin, begin to sink into things like fear of other people's opinions or that sort of, oh, my goodness, so-and-so's on a holiday. Oh, I'd like to be on a holiday. Cut that out. It doesn't make us feel good. Reduce social media. Get outside. Demark the time that you finish work and that you're going to go into the kitchen and maybe cook yourself something wonderful. I, I have something called a take me to a 10 playlist. Every, any song on there, it tells me I finished work it, from like when I was 16 years old onwards. I collected songs and take me to a 10. Um, so and, and stay hydrated. We can we can, you know, do without food for a few days. But water, water, water is really, really important. And Lucinda, I'm just going to do one last thing. Um, I, I know you asked me which I mean, clients in everything. When you said to me, which clients would I could I use as a case study uh, hundreds um I, uh, I I adore my clients and um and massive successes but I'm going to tell you just one um and and often people can often start in a really low place um and this client came to me and uh, and I know she won't mind me saying um incredibly talented lady um, had been a professional dancer, runs a dance school, has run a restaurant. She is a photographer. She is an artist, but in an incredibly low place. And the reason I give her as an example is because the potential and where she could have been was so unexplored. Um, and actually, we started every session with tears and probably went through the session with lots of tears. Um, and we were needed to create some outcomes in terms of where life could be, what, what life could do, and also finding joy. Because for me, finding your piece of joy in life around doing these things is vital or, or we don't keep going. And actually, her goal was to find joy again in life and also to be able to look in the mirror and to love herself again. It makes me, I, I feel upset when I even think about it. I don't know why, because she's an absolute success story. She her, her dream was to have either a restaurant or a dance center or, or an area where she could have a shop with maybe some food, but certainly all her photography, all her prints. And she wanted to turn it into cut. We we brainstormed what this was going to look like. And bit by bit by bit by bit, she put it together. And I can say to you that four months ago, she opened her shop. And I just want to show you two things. Um, it's my son's birthday tomorrow. Um, and she's uh, one of the things that she's doing at the moment. I said to her, you know, he loves tigers. So she did me a tiger card. Um, and, and this is her brand, RT Elf. And even nicer than that, I was going to go to a corporate brand because I talk a lot about philosophy and values. Um, I wanted to send something out to my clients. I want them to have a bookmark, which has their values. Can you see that? Yes. yes. Um, so I said to her, who shall I go to to get this done? Da, 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 da. And I want the personal philosophy to go on the back. And she next minute, she pinged me these, she'd made them and she'd sent them off them for me. Nice. So, I mean, incredible. And I walk in her shop and each time I, I tear up a little bit because I think about those first few sessions. So yeah. in terms of where people can go to uh, and go from and to, it's huge. But there's some deep work to be done along the way. That's that's so interesting and it's inspiring and I it I think it's particularly apt to be able to um, conclude in tying it into joy because you know we've only got one life as we know and I think we forget that we particularly as adults we're allowed to factor joy back into our lives. Um, mm. So thank you so much, Kerry, for your thoughts and suggestions and your questions as well. You can find more about Kerry and um, work and practice got a website eat nourish flourish and on linkedin and um, and also a reminder that um at obelisk the team the consultant team are here to help you with any questions about your work as a legal consultant we've got lots of articles and other resources on our attic blog posts and this move the needle webinar joins the others in our series uh, which are available to 
watch again on our, um, our Bliss Support YouTube. So thank you very much and see you soon in the next seminar, I hope.